Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's create some surface slime. Now, I'm going to start by telling you that I'm in the shading tab. I've got viewport shading enabled and I've got a basic principled VSDF shader setup already applied to the object. I'm also using the cycles render engine and my GPU to do the computations. So first up, we're going to press shift A and search for a wave texture. And we are going to plug that into a bump node into the height socket. And the bump node is going to get plugged into the normal of the principled shader. Now we've got the waves, that's fine, but we need to uh, change a few things here. I'm going to search for and apply a noise texture. I'm going to connect the color from the noise texture into the vector of the wave texture. I'm going to leave all of these as they are. And I'm going to apply a texture coordinate, not a mapping node, to the noise texture and connect the object value to the vector of the noise texture. Okay, let's make a couple of changes here before we move on. In the noise texture, we're going to set the scale at 2, detail to 15, roughness to 0.45, and distortion to 0.15. In the wave texture, we're going to change the scale to 2, distortion to 8, detail to 15, detail scale to 1, Detail roughness to 0.25 and leave the phase offset at zero. Now for the bump node, set the strength at 0.65 and the distance at 0.1. Now next up, we need to add a color ramp. And we're going to take the factor from the wave texture into the factor of the color ramp. We're going to pull, uh, take the color from the color ramp into the emission color. And we're going to take the alpha into the alpha. Change the interpolation mode to B spline. And then I'm just going to zoom in on that particular color ramp as I want to add three more colors in between. We're going to push this one right up to 0.95. This one to 0.85. And this one to 0.5. Uh, this first one we're going to take to, let's say, 0.15. Maybe 0 0.2. Nope, too much. 0.175. That one. Now we're going to change these to successive colors of green, but basically I'm going to do that by choosing my first green, which is going to be, let's say, this one. Let's say that. So 0 0.34111. 1, 1, 1. Now I'm going to change over to the hex tab and copy that. Oops. Good job we copied it. And then I'm going to paste it into the next one. But I'm going to go into the value and drop that down. Let's say 0 0.15. 
And then again here, pasting the hex value, dropping the value itself to point one. Hmm. Yes, okay. And then we'll do the same again. Point zero five for this one. Now basically, um, that's actually give us an, given is, hmm, I can't say this. That's basically done it in reverse. So what I'm gonna do is just shift these around a bit. So this one was 0.5, this one was 0.95, oops. And this one was 0.85. So now you can see we've got uh, quite a lot of slime going on, but there's more to do. Now we need to change the base color. And this is basically gonna be the, the color of your object as opposed to the slime. So we'll go in here We'll increase the saturation, uh, change the hue a little bit, and let's just go for a sort of a dark, dark brown maybe. Could be stone, could be whatever. So you can see, we've got the, the, the slime sort of growing in intensity as it reaches its pinnacles. I'm fairly sure that's a word. Now, we don't want the same roughness for the ground as we do for the slime. We want the slime to be glossy and the ground to be rough. So we are going to grab a color ramp. We're going to take the factor from this color ramp into the factor for this one. And then we're going to use this to control the overall roughness. Now, just before I do that, um, actually, no, I'll do that now. So we're going with a linear one here, and then we're actually going to reverse, so flip the color ramp, so the white is on the left and the black is on the right. And then we're gonna move the black all the way over to about, well, let's say 0.175. And we can now see that We've got rough areas where we've got the background and then it kind of creeps up into the glossy areas of the green. And we can spread that even further over the slime by moving the slider to the left. So let's go for 0 0.05 on that. So you can now see we've got nice toxic slime and we can soften this out a little bit this graduation of color this is probably a bit too intense so let's go into that and drop the value a bit should we say 0.275 that looks about right doesn't it yeah let's go with that Okay, so anything else we need to change? I don't think so. Not sure sheen tint makes a difference. Specular. Mm. I mean, it does make a difference. Let's leave it at 0.5. And let's just drop the value down a bit more on that one. Um, and that, to be honest, is basically it. Uh, you can you can change the intensity of the slime obviously by changing the bump um, so it can just have a little bit of rise or you can go all the way up so it's kind of a horrible gross mossy slime and if you wanted to animate the slime over the surface, change the noise texture to 4D and just gradually shift the W value and you can see how that kind of, um, ew, it's gross, that just kind of moves around a bit. So you could animate that slime. Okay, that's it for this one. Let's just render that out and you can get a better look of what it looks like. Um, as I said, I'm using the Cycles Render Engine 
GPU to um, put it through. I'm going to just drop those samples down to 512. I'm going to turn off denoising um, just because I like the detail that we've got going on here. And let's see what we get. And there we go. We've got nice slimy surface slime. Um, but and by plugging it into the emission, the actual slime does give off light. So if that's not something that you want, let's take the color from the green color ramp and plug it into the base color. Let's add in uh, what did we have before? We had a brownie colour, didn't we? So that's quite good. But we might need to make some adjustments to this. Do we need to take out the alpha? Yep, yeah, that makes no difference. We can take that out. What difference does this make? So you may need to just move this black slider over to the right to reduce the glossiness on the background color, which is set by the leftmost color on our color ramp. In fact, we could probably chuck in an extra color here and make this a bit darker. kind of works doesn't it okay so not much else changed and you can see the difference the slime here takes on a more um, muted tone so it's less neon basically and by moving the slime colors to the right you kind of affect the spread of the slime itself so essentially these two are creating the bump that goes into here. So that's the bump. This is adding color depending on the height of the bump. And this is refining that to separate them out. And then obviously it's combining here to um, put them together in your finished piece. So let's quickly run that through. And there we go. So this version actually rendered out five times faster than the one where we were plugging the color into the emission. So if that emission is not what you want, then use the second option. And if you do want the sort of brighter greens, just change the colors in the color ramp. Anyway, hope that helps and I hope you find it useful. Please remember to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the notification bell icon for notifications about future videos. And in the meantime, thanks for watching.